All right. So I just want to let everyone know that we're at tonight's um, Youth Advisory Board meeting on June 4th. Um, I, it is being recorded. And um, I just have to read something just to get it out of the way that the meeting is going to be recorded per Governor Lamont's Executive Order 7B. Um, and that I ask that um, if you're not speaking, if you can keep your um, mics on mute um, and then jump in whenever you want, you feel you need to. Um, and can I just ask, there's an 860-970-3545. Who's that? They're on, you're muted. If you want to unmute and just let me know who it is. Hello, nine seven zero three five four five. It's me, Patrick. Oh, hi, Patrick. <laughs> hi. All right. So, okay, I think everyone's accounted for. So, Ryan, whenever you're ready, you can call the meeting to order. Of course, he's muted, so he can't hear. Oh, sorry. I thought no, I was unmuted. No, you're good. <laughs> I would like to call the June 4th meeting to order at 7.09 p.m. All right, thank you. Um, I had put, um, I had set everyone an agenda. So if, um, if you could, you can reference the agenda as we go through it. Uh, the, I had put introductions down on the agenda, but I think everyone here knows each other. That was just in case anybody new was joining the meeting. Um, unless you guys feel that we should go around and do introductions, but I think we're good, right? Yeah, we're good. Okay. <laughs> we know um, each other a little too much. Just a little kidding. too much. It's all good. It's all good. <laughs> um, so, Ryan, I mean, Ryan, if you want to go down the agenda, do you want me to kind of go down the agenda? What works best for you? Either way, I can do it if you want. I mean, okay, do you have it in front of you? Is it good to go down? Yeah, I've got, okay. I've got it split screen right now. Okay, perfect. So you said no introduction, so approval of the March 5th minutes? This Correct. Is this is Barbara Rue. I move we approve the March 5th minutes printed. I, I believe I saw an error. Okay. Uh, unless I'm really losing my mind. I'm no really sure that I was not at the meeting in March and my name is there. Oh, it is? Okay. Sorry about that. Not a problem. Nice to be included even when I'm not there. I'll take that off. So the motion is really even that the minutes be moved as corrected and then someone seconds it. I'll second it, Marie Alfonso. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Any abstentions? Oh, Brian, you sound so good doing that. That's like, right on point. <laughs> Thank you. So we can move on to the financial report. Um, correct. So um, with that, um, our balance um, was um, at our last meeting, $2,759.67. Um, since then, um, we'll get into this later on in the agenda, but we held um, our scholarship, our Yabit scholarship, and there was an, a winner awarded. So we would like to issue the $1,000 scholarship, which would bring our, um, our financial total to $1,759.67. If I can have a motion for us to send a check to our award recipient. Um, I'll help. make that motion. You wanna, yeah, just say the Pam. name. You wanna say Pam I'll make the motion. Barbara Rue, I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Colleen, do you want to give the name or um, uh, Colleen or um, Patrick or P 
Pam, were you on the committee as well? No. Or Eric? No, it was Barb. It was Barb. Um, the winner of the um, 2020 scholarship was uh, Samantha Strong. She, um, the, we had three candidates and she was well deserved of it. She's going to go to uh, Johnson and Wales and play soccer and she's going into the medical field. So she's done a lot of volunteer work throughout the community. So she's aware that she won it. I posted it on Facebook and I told her I would get back to her on how we planned on giving her the check considering we weren't having the award ceremony this year. And we can definitely process the check. Um, you, did we want to, did, were we thinking about doing, trying to do anything formal with that? The best way we could, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I know, I feel like we should try to do something, but I don't really know what's like feasible to do at this point. If anyone has any suggestions. We could agree on a date and time to go by her house and have like someone have a moment there of the delivery, the social distancing in place, just a thought. We could do that. I mean, I could reach out to her at the house. Mom, find out what her schedule is. Just How about I reach out to mom and to get back to you guys via email and maybe we can figure something out with whoever's around and I can get a balloon once the check is, yep. um, how long does the check usually take to process, Erica? Um, I don't know. We might have already processed it. Let me ask. I put it in. What was that? I put it in like three weeks ago. Did it, and it hasn't come down yet? No. Was, not that I know was it? Was it sent out to her? I, I don't know. Did it have her address on it? I can't remember. Yes, it did. It did. Yeah. It might have, I'll check on it. Um, but even if we could just do something as like a formality just to say congratulations. Yeah, I agree. Okay. And I'll check on the... Let me know. Um, and then I can get, you know, a few balloons and talk to mom and see what her schedule is and figure something out. Okay. Yeah, we could do it at her house, could do it at her soccer field. So All right. She's a soccer player. Yeah, I think we'll, you know, definitely be something short and sweet and social distancing and all that stuff, all that good stuff. But I think that would be sweet. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. Okay. Sorry about that, Ryan. Thanks. So moving on to the youth services report. Yeah, um, Patrick, if you have anything you want to add since the March meeting, um, I know things have been a little crazy and different. So anything you can you can add would be great. Mm -hmm. Oh, Patrick, you're muted. I'm sorry. I think did I mute you? No, you're you muted yourself. I think. So we got in touch with the the people who did the basic cooking class finally tracked them down, finally got invoices. So we're all caught up with them. All the financial reports for the fall, winter, and the spring classes that as much as they ran are in and done. And now, right now, I'm just starting to work toward fall, connect with everybody to see who's still planning on doing Friday night hangouts, the ASAP, the tutoring, and just seeing who's still interested in doing that for the fall on the chance that we're back to normal by then. Huh, whatever normal is. Just, uh, just connecting with everybody to see if they're still interested. So we have a plan going forward. Great. Do you want to just give an update on the camp situation for the summer? Because I know, um, and then I can speak a little bit on the campership from that. Well, Based on what our local health department said, we are not running any camps this summer. And that includes Newington, Bolton, and Rocky Hill. Everything is pretty much shut down for the summer. The uh, center for, the governor basically gave executive orders allowing, originally he said, we, or he said, originally we were told we can start on June 29th with 30 kids. 
So I already started working toward that. Then it switched to June 22nd, again with 30 kids. And then I'll just recently switch it back to June 22nd with 50 kids. So there's still a lot of chaos coming out of Hartford. So no one's really 100% sure what's going on. But it's kind of all for not for our four towns because we're all done. And a lot of other towns are actually done. It's not just us. Mm. Kathy, did you want to add anything or are you good? I think one of the things too is the, the guidelines and recommendations ca that came out from the governor's executive orders as to how to run the camps, very, very complex and difficult to do mm. just based on how they wanted social distancing. And even though Patrick said you could have 30 children, which is what we were working on per facility, then they came back and said, you could only have 10 children in a room with a staff member, but you couldn't cross contaminate with staff members or children. So that group of 10 pretty much had to stay by itself when it was inside. And then when they went outside, you had a social distance and keep the kids to sort of try and stay in their same group and looking at everything and the cleaning that was gonna be involved in it. It just was a very difficult decision to make to say, we just can't do it because we don't think the kids are going to social distance either when they're outside. Mm -hmm. So really tough decisions that we had to work through and we wanted to run them and it was just too difficult. Yeah. And um, just while I have you, if you want to give any updates, um, uh, should we, do we have any updates about the pools? Um, sure. We, well, it, it's, as much as you have, I guess. It's always a moving target. Where, where we are right now is Willard Pool is closed and there's going to be no swim lessons or Barracuda swim team. However, we are working towards opening Mill Woods and we're, we're, we're working on that process right now because that's there are certain requirements for that also. We're working through that, but we're also understanding there's going to be more information coming out from the Department of Public Health on how we could run the pools. So we're waiting to hear how that's gonna work. We're fortunate that Mill Woods is the beach because with the uh, pool guidelines, you've got a social distance on the deck or the beach. We've got the beach and the grass area that's large enough for us to social distance. It's gonna be a matter of what they're gonna come out with with numbers and capacity of the pool and part of it is we're gonna to have to look at how is it that we're gonna get people to come and it might need to be a reservation system so that we would be able to let people come in and not turn people away at the door. So all of that is a work in progress to be changed at a later date. Does anybody have any questions? I feel sorry for the parents of young kids. <laughs> it's going to be a rough summer. You're right about that. Mm -hmm. Well, my daughter was telling me, she said we should go out and buy a little swimming pool. She said, Derek, that's going to be the next big rush. <laughs> yep, yeah, I see her right. son works, my son works for Namco and they're completely sold out. His checks are like, $5,000 commission checks. <gasps> he, they're done. Like he works 80 hours a week. Wow. They're completely sold out because the manufacturer went down. Wow. So, wow. You'll have a hard time. I know all the pool stores are, all the pool stores are in the same situation. Wow. And also um, swing wow. sets too. You can't buy a swing set anywhere. I did hear that. Yeah. Oh, interesting. I tried to buy a water sand table, a new oh, one. Yeah. That one, they're sold out everywhere. I snagged one at Costco. <laughs> <laughs> Yay for you! But but yeah, swing sets. I mean, Home Depot, Lowe's, everywhere. You just you can't you can't find one, <clears throat> which isn't surprising. Mm -hmm. wow. And you could you could certainly in, encourage parents that have children to go to the Park and Rec website and the Facebook page, because we are going to try and do activities throughout the summer. Some will be online, some will be, you can pick up a craft uh, craft project, uh, we'll, we'll have a place to pick it up and you can take it home and work on it. So staff are being very creative of 
how to give parents ideas of how to entertain the kids. We looked at doing online camps and things of that nature. And the word we got back is they, the kids want to be outside. They don't want to be looking at the computer at this point. Right. So we're going to be doing some little things throughout the summer. So keep an eye out on the Facebook page and um, it'll keep you updated on what we've got going on. Is right. the library going to open in some shape, manner, or form eventually? Yeah. The um, as of right now, we're telling people we're hoping for some time in June to open up. Um, and it would, at this stage, it would only be for picking up holds. So if you've placed holds over the last few weeks or, you know, while we're closed, yep. um, we would have it ready for you. Or you could place a hold. It wouldn't be like same day pickup, but we would pull it with all the rest of the holds the next morning. Um, we will likely be doing appointments like five people um, within like a 15 minute window. And mm -hmm. um, we would have everything ready for you in a bag with your name on it. And you would just come in, grab it and get out. Um, we're looking at physically putting furniture to prevent people from even going further into the library. Um, but we do want to start back up, uh, you know, with borrowing services of, of print material. Because of course we've had our digital offerings this whole time. But so that's, in sometime in the next couple weeks. So we'll be announcing probably pretty soon. Wonderful. The, re the reason I asked is I, the Wellfleet, Massachusetts, the reason I asked is the Wellfleet, Massachusetts library was talking about um, how you could order materials and they happen to have a big porch and they're gonna put it out of a table and your, your item is gonna be there for you to pick up. Maybe you could use that, you know, the space by the town hall entrance, which is sort of covered. Um, Just so, a yeah, we, we're going to be letting people into um, into the library, but it's there's I don't know if you've all been into the library, but right in the um, right when you get inside mm -hmm. and you go through the vestibule, we've had um, shelves there where the friends of the library sell right, yep. books. Mm -hmm. um, so the the books for sale are going to be cleared out and that's where the holds are going to be. Um, okay. Just so you don't have to go even any further than that into the library. Um, we are trying to eliminate liability of going out and going up and down the steps and stuff. Um, so some libraries are doing curbside pickup um, and Brooke, the director, really wants to stay away from that for us. Um, but it, there's no 100% no consensus between libraries on when to open, what services to offer, how many people to allow in the building. So it's um, so Brooke is really taking the recommendations of Charlie Brown, the director of the health district. Um, she's, she's working closely with him and really taking his uh, recommendations seriously. So. I'm just wondering with um, the curtailing of the summer camps, um, and I think I saw dance and drama isn't happening. I know that that was the source of some really um, good jobs for um, the teenagers. So does that mean those kids who have maybe did it last summer, aren't, um, there won't be anything for them this summer? That's correct, unfortunately, that when we don't run the, pro <clears throat> when we don't run the programs, they all, the money that they bring in actually pays for the program. So without being able to run the program, we don't have the funds to pay the staff. And um, we may look at bringing some staff back for some things, but probably not a lot of staff at all. I, that's what I figured, but that's a shame. Yeah, for everything. Mm, definitely. Um, I can give, um, so just to, to piggyback on the camps, um, we still will offer camperships. Um, we still have a little bit of funding left in our account um, and stuff that has come in um, and some emergency funding that has been coming in since the whole COVID pandemic. Um, we know that childcare is probably an issue for many parents at this point. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of their options are no longer an option, but um, we know that it's probably difficult to find a, a, a open spot somewhere, but we are um, still um, able to offer the, the campership to those who qualify for it. So I don't want to have people hesitate to apply for it. 
Um, I just know that there's not as many camps um, that are available right now. Um, and then I can go right into our juvenile review board. We've kind of put stuff on hold in terms of holding our, uh, our, our meetings right now. Um, our case manager has still been checking in with the families and um, making referrals as needed and um, any needs that come up, we've been able to, to meet them. We are looking to start resuming some um, you know, meetings via Zoom. We just are trying to get all that you know, um, settled and put away and, and come up with a, a strategy to do so. But um, we were hoping to maybe start that again um, soon so we can close out some cases and uh, be able to meet as a group with some of the other cases. Um, any other questions that anyone had around youth service stuff? Um, could I say a few more things about the library? Absolutely. Okay. Um, so we are going to still be doing our summer reading program this year. Um, where we're doing the children's, the teen, and the adult. It's mostly, you know, of course, we're pushing um, digital, digital um, items, titles. Um, we have several databases. Um, that people can access with a smartphone or a tablet. Um, we're going to be handing out prizes, mostly mailing them just to keep the foot traffic down. Um, but we're going to be sending out a packet of information to the schools so that they can send it out to all the students. Because usually what they do is they organize a couple days with us where they actually bring the students into the library. We talk about all of our resources. We talk about the summer reading program. And they have several days to really push it. And this year, they have like 20 minutes to to get all the information including other stuff besides library stuff um, out to them um, and so we were preparing a packet of information to send out and so we're hoping for good participation but of course it's different because we can't be having programs in the library to draw kids and um, that's frustrating and disappointing to us because nobody's more ready than we are to offer you know library services um, but do, you know, do encourage kids to check that out. And you too, we're having an adult program as well with prizes. Um, the other thing too, is that we finally hired a teen librarian. Um, awesome. Yeah, she, awesome. uh, last time we met in March, I think I told you we were starting um, interviews. Um, you know, we offered her the job and then the world exploded. <laughs> and, um, you know, we just, we had to wait to see what the budget was and all that stuff. So finally, finally, we could start, uh, offer her a start date, and she's going to be starting on the 15th. Um, so her name is Sarah, and she actually comes from a school setting. She's a media specialist from a school, um, and so we're really excited about that because um, she'll be able to speak the language of our media spe specialists, you know, at the middle school and the high school, and um, I think she'll be really awesome in creating partnerships with them. We already have great partnerships, but to make it even, them even richer than they are now. Um, and so we're really excited for her to start a little apprehensive just because it's such an odd situation for someone to, you know, to like onboard someone into a new workplace. Um, but we are really excited to have her. And so I guess um, probably the next meeting I'll, I'll bring her with me and hand it over to her and you guys can all meet her. So. Great. Okay. Great. I have a quick question about the packets you're sending to the schools. Are they going to be electronic packages? Yeah, so so we're just, I think they're going to be sending out a packet. We're sending, you know, like a couple flyers and information about the program. Mm -hmm. um, and I think they're going to bundle it all in like one big PDF or something like that and send it out that way to everybody. Perfect. Yeah. I have a question about that as well. Um, what are you doing for folks whose kids don't have devices at home? Um, we, well, you can, you can place a hold and then come pick them up at the library because we're okay. going to be open for holds pickup. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. We didn't, we didn't want to start the summer reading program until we were open for picking up holds. Okay. Great. Thank you. And, and all students in town grades three through 12 have uh, school issued devices that are not being collected. So they will have them over the summer. Okay. okay. Good to know. Thank you. Yeah. Good. That is good to know. I could also share that um, in social and youth services, um, we're still continuing doing the food bank operations, um, toiletries also. Um, it's just curbside pickup, so we're still putting together bags of food. We're still doing our weekend meal program. 
Um, um, things have been busy with donations coming in and donations going out. So we're really appreciative of the community and how much they're really um, stepping up and, you know, donating monetary and also uh, goods on a daily basis. Uh, we've had a lot of groups, a lot of neighborhoods who've dropped off tons and tons and tons of stuff. Um, and so we're able to push them out and give um, a lot of households um, meet their needs for um, any food insecurities that are coming up. Um, we're also looking into how, um, oh, Eric got logged off. Let me get him back in here. I can't hear you. Sorry about that. Am I better now? Yes. yes. Okay. You look great. I just didn't know what you were saying. <laughs> Thanks. Um, so we're, uh, so the, I was speaking about the donations, the food bank. Um, so we're being able to keep up with the needs and all the great donations that are coming in. Um, we just want to push it back out into the community to the people that really need it right now. Um, we are also um, looking at partnering with the schools to see how summer lunches can be rolled out. They might be able to apply for some waivers. Um, we haven't heard back definitely yet, but um, Social and Youth Services is willing to partner with them as best as we could to see how we can still um, have lunches available for those families who are struggling financially in the summer. We still have our weekend meal program. Um, so it would be a continuation of that because we usually do some type of summer lunch program um, that is extended from our weekend program in the summer. Um, and so families can take advantage of that. And more families have taken advantage of, of that since um, the COVID-19 occurred. Um, so we're in communication with the schools um, to see if any families have any needs that are coming up, um, particularly financial needs, um, mental health needs that we can make referrals. Um, so that's been going well. Um, and we will start looking at how to best roll out what we're going to do because we usually do our back to school supply drive. It's probably not going to look the same this year, but we're hoping that we can still make it happen. It'll just be looking a little different. Um, any other questions about youth service stuff? If folks want to make donations in terms of goods, should they email you or email somebody else? In terms of the times, you know, to drop off and the like. Sure. Um, they can, you can definitely email me. We are okay. taking donations daily from okay. 8 o'clock to 4.30, Monday through Friday. We just ask, um, well, there's carriages placed outside of Town okay. Hall um, on the entrance for 505 Silas Dean, which you can leave um, the bags right in there, or the food right in there. We do ask if, you know, we will check that throughout the day. If you can give okay. us a call on our main number, this 860-721-2977 um, um, number, we okay. can, um, we can, if there's something curious, we can go out there and get that right away so we can put it in the fridge or the freezer. Okay, great, thank you. Any other questions? Oh, I thought Barbara was, she's just waving. Um, okay. Um, Brian, are we good with moving on? Yeah, sure. We can okay. continue to continue business. Um, so we got a little bit of the scholarship updates or anything else anybody wanted to add about the, the scholarship process. I know it was a little different than normal. Um, I'm glad that we still were able to conduct our interviews via, um, you know, the Zoom uh, Google platform and award a winner. I don't know if anyone wants to add anything to that. Obviously our youth volunteer recognition event was canceled for this year. Um, still looking to hold it in the years to come. Um, but are we, Patrick, are we sending out something in, through the mail to those who would have gotten an award at the volunteer recognition event? We have not yet. Okay. Yeah. But we still can. 
I think it might be important to get it in the mail to them if we can. I don't know what the group thinks. Well, I think it, this is Barbara, I think it would be a really good idea because, um, I mean, one of the things is I think, I, I know with my clients that I can't see, I've been sending my kid clients, I've been sending them notes and cards and it gives the kids something to get. Um, you know, we don't think I about think snail mail, but yeah, snail surprise. mail is fun. It is. It's a surprise. We have that certificate that we would have given full pages to for everybody that was coming to the event. I think we just cut that down in half and put it like two on one page and just go through the whole list of applicants we got and just send a bunch out. I think that would be cool. At least yeah, they yeah, still the would get something as like a nice thank you for, you know, their efforts. It's already created. It'll just a matter of typing names in at that point. Yeah, we can put a little note in as like a thank you from the youth advisory board and maybe yeah. we'll put everybody's name on it uh, in the membership. Does that work for everybody? That sounds like a great idea. Good. Wonderful. Awesome. I'll get right on that tomorrow as soon as I clean the cage. Yeah, <laughs> whenever. I, I get, I know we're all, you know, all over the place, but I think if we can get something out even over the summer. They can get this through the mail. I think okay. it'd, be a, it'd be a nice thing. Um, so that's our, did anybody want to add anything else about the scholarship committee? Or well, one of the things we're going to need to do, obviously, is raise money for next year. Next year. That is yeah. accurate, yeah. So that goes into the second part of this, which is fundraising. So we can okay. talk about that as well. We had some great events lined up. Um, so I want to give you guys a lot of credit. We had Porter Bayarda and um, we had Wooden Tap. Unfortunately, just like everything else that's been going on, um, it's not able to happen. Um, but I'm, I'm, if anybody in the group wants to share any ideas or thoughts about going forward, please. Okay, I, I, I make this speech all the time. To raise $1,000, we need three wills at $300 and a little bit more. Surely we can find three people that need a will. And then we have our scholarship money. Way too much Eric, Eric, Perhaps. you remember Eric? Frontier's bank was gone. You're muted, Eric. Yeah, well, it was a, you know, you know, 90 bucks is for just the internet and the phone. You're muted, Eric. And then $131 for the <laughs> So. <laughs> somebody's muted, but somebody's not. I think you're mute. You're muted yourself. I think you have to unmute Eric. How about now? Yeah, now yeah, you're good. There you are. <laughs> All right. We get two other people to sign up. I'm here. I'm with you. you. Ready to make your will, Eric? You ready? He just muted himself again. He doesn't want to talk. <laughs> Eric. Yeah, now you're good. <laughs> I can't even unmute myself. Do you think I can put it together a will? <laughs> you don't have to do much. You just have to call me up. I ask you the questions. You questions. give me the answers. It's not hard. Uh, you do it over the phone? Yeah. Yes. Uh, that's even the better. only thing, I mean, I tell people this all the time. You don't have to go make a list of your assets. You don't have to do anything. Just call me up and, and I'll tell you what you need to tell me. All right, let's do that. Except I'm going on vacation on Monday. <laughs> but I know That's where you live and work. We'll do it later this summer, maybe, when I have time off. I'm yeah. working like a dog lately. Well, I'll, I'll, remind, I'll remind him. Don't worry. <laughs> oh, I know you. <laughs> and, and we do will signings in the parking lot. Oh, right in the lot? We do, we do our will. We've done all the will signings in the parking lot. Parking lot. You better bring your own pen, though, Eric. Yeah, you got to bring your own pen. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I hear that. I don't blame you for that. <laughs> I mean, I think if we want to, you know, take the summer to definitely think of a game plan for the fall, I think that would um, would be a great, you know, great idea seeing what everything looks like at that point. Yeah. Um, but if everyone wants to talk about ideas, um, we can definitely put that in like emails if anything comes up and anyone sees something different or unique that we could try. I mean, we're open to it. Barbara, call me Sully again, I'm sorry, but how much did you say you're gonna charge for the charity here? 
It's three hundred and fifty dollars for the will, and the youth service advisory board gets three hundred. Oh, okay. I get fifty for the paper and the ink and my right. valuable time. <laughs> what is it? Just so I can like promote it with my friends. It's like, a oh. will. It's a durable power of attorney. It's a healthcare power of attorney, and it's a living will. Okay, got All it. those documents. I said. I sent the great. chief the form for healthcare power of attorneys because I told him every cop should have one. You know what we ought to do? What if we had like a pamphlet that we could put like on Facebook? I have a pamphlet. Yeah, send it to me. <laughs> I email it to me. I'll put it in like the locker room with the PD and stuff, you know? Okay, I'll send it to you. Because I mean, we could do it, you know, I could figure out how many I could do over the course of a year and it would, it would help with the campership and certainly the scholarship. Sounds good. It beats bake sales. <laughs> I don't think we could be. I don't think we can do bake sales at this given time. Well, and the thing is, is if this took off a little bit as a project, I'm willing to bet I could find a couple other lawyers in town who might be willing to, to help. Because say, say I say each say say I said five wills. That's fifteen hundred dollars. And if I found three or four more lawyers, we could raise a truckload of money. Money. It's not that hard. It's a form. It's basic information. Unless you have eleven million dollars, you don't need it's anything complicated. You're out then, Eric. It's complicated for you. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> it's not like you have children to worry about. I'm not even worried about them. I'm just gonna have Barb. Yes, you know, Barb watches them all the time anyway, so <laughs> <laughs> no problem. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, if, if yeah, if, um, that, um, that flyer yeah, over. Yeah, if you want to send that flyer over, um, I will. I will. I'll find it. I came across it because one of the things I've been doing is cleaning my office. That, that's great. Yeah. So, and if anyone else has any other ideas, feel free to send it to the, the whole group and we can, you know, um, definitely think about it. I know we usually have a um, retreat over the summer. Um, I'm not going to put that off the table. So let's see how things go. Maybe we can do something like that. Social distancing. Nice to get together towards the end of the summer to kind of plan out, uh, you know, the 2020, 2021. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. And maybe a lot of people will be around because yep. that many people are uh, taking big. And then we just get an answer from yeah. the group, and we can get all the over the um, I will keep you guys um, updated on that as well. Um, so um, I guess I can wow. go right into the grants, and then we can just go into anything else anyone wants to discuss. So I'm happy to say that we um, finished applying for that first grant that uh, we told you about. The um, yeah. prevention framework grant um, that was due in the beginning of March, um, which is uh, was submitted. Hey, can I interrupt for a second? Barb Bellis, can you mute you? Because we're getting a lot of, I'm getting a, thank you. Oh, that's it. Okay. Um, sorry about that, guys. So, um, the strategic prevention framework grant that was submitted uh, back um, in the beginning of March. We're just waiting to hear back on that. Um, supposedly, we weren't supposed to hear back until um, August um, at the earliest, but um, source has been telling me that they're getting back to people a little sooner. So maybe we might hear in June or July, which would be really nice. Um, and we're actually right now in the middle of finishing up the Drug-Free Communities Grant. So I know I asked a bunch of different people to be sector representatives who've got me back their signatures on agreements. I appreciate um, the turnaround on that. Um, it's really helping us with the grant um, to get that in. So we just have a couple of last minute tedious stuff um, to do for the grant and it should be submitted by Monday, which is awesome. Um, well, at least it's awesome for me because it's another thing off my plate. <laughs> but um, it, they're, they're time consuming, um, but I feel a, a little more confident now working on grants. Um, don't, doesn't mean I want to do a lot of them in the future, but um, it was definitely a different type of exercise to do. The second grant, the CDC um, 
drug-free community grant was originally coming out from SAMHSA. Um, and actually last minute we found out that it came, it actually came out from CDC. Um, and the original due date was in the beginning of April, um, which I wasn't even sure if we'd be able to do it because of the turnaround and everything that was going on, but they ended up extending it until June. So uh, we lucked out. So we figured we'd be able to, to get it, get it done. Um, but it's probably because the CDC has a lot of other things that priorities at this point. So, um, I'm confident that we had some really great people helping through the process. Um, Bonnie Smith has been awesome and um, she's just great to work with. So I'm fingers crossed and I'm hoping we get one of these big multi-year grants and then uh, yeah, we'll be doing a lot of great stuff in the upcoming years. Um, I'm trying to think, Tyler, did you have anything you wanted to share from town council? I don't, not to put you on the spot, just any. No, I mean, uh, obviously we, we passed our budget. I guess the only thing I would say, and I, I said this at Parks and Rec the other day, just, to, um, you know, I know there was some concern going around town that one of the uh, cost saving scenarios that was on the table from the town manager's perspective, I think it was the fourth scenario was uh, essentially one that would gut parks and rec and social services almost completely. Um, you know, the only thing I've really been saying that's evident now that the budget has passed, but just so, you know, people in the future know too that, um, you know, we really, that was never on the table for us. Um, and, and I wouldn't expect anything like that. I mean, you know, commissions like this and parks and rec and a few others are, uh, a, a huge priority for us, especially now more than ever, like you guys are saying, parents with young children, um, these are the sort of programs we're really, you know, prioritizing keeping uh, and trying to find our cost savings because these are the kind of things we're, we're looking at now more than ever. So that's really the only thing is just anybody who was worried that uh, parks and rec or social services or youth programs or anything like that would be on the chopping block. That's, uh, that's not gonna happen. Um, thank you. Um, thank you guys for all your time on town council and the town manager. I know, um, I, I mean, different staff here as well, but everyone was uh, definitely uh, working a lot and um, taking their time and, and with the budget. And we appreciate all the time and effort you guys put in. Um, and we'll just keep our fingers crossed with everything and just uh, keep continue to do all the great stuff that we're doing. And hopefully with some grant money, we could do even more. Um, anybody have any new items that they want to share? I would. Yes, I was waiting for this. All right. I would like to share a couple bits of great information. I will start with, um, on June 2nd, we had a virtual academic award ceremony for uh, juniors and seniors. And um, there are a few people that we all know who received awards. I'll start with Colleen's daughter, Abby, who's a graduating senior. She received an award um, from one of the chiropractors, or I should say a scholarship from one of the chiropractors in town, Dr. Chris Lavoy. So that was awesome. And then um, Eric's son, Dylan, won an award. It's uh, called Nutmeg Boy State. Um, and it's an award that goes to an all around kid, academic leadership, um, as well as athleticism. And typically, um, the recipients of this award would go to Eastern Connecticut State University for, I'm not sure how long, maybe five days um, at the end of June um, for a leadership conference. But um, from what I understand is that it'll happen at the end of June, 2021. And then finally, our own um, Ryan, um, received three awards. Yeah, he was like the star of the show. Um, one of the awards was, um, he was one of four recipients that received a school recognition award. And that is a scholarship provided by staff 
um, through dress down days on Fridays. And Pam, you, you can add anything here. Um, I, I'm thinking the criteria is just all around good kids, academic, kind, leadership, anything else? I think, I think okay. Um, but Ryan, um, that was one of the awards. And then um, he received Outstanding Business Education Student. So that's pretty impressive. Um, and what was the last one? Um, John Warren Potter Award. Um, and he was a teacher years ago, and he was um, a teacher that was very, very well liked for a number of reasons. And again, it's that all around terrific kid that everybody loves and that's Ryan. So congratulations. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. It means a lot. Yeah, that's great. I mean, I was so, I, I, I tell you, I work for the school, so I couldn't cheer. Like I felt like I couldn't. We had it was an online chat, so it was. We tried to make it as live as possible, um, and I wanted to cheer for Dylan and Ryan and Abby, but I'm like, oh, I work there, I can't cheer. So at the very <laughs> end, I just said, "Great job to all the kids." Yeah. Congratulations you. to all of them and their parents who have. Been help develop them to be yes. good humans. Yep. Yeah. Gotcha. Great job with that bar, by the way. Yeah, it, it was um, like herding cats. <laughs> 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 yeah. Because it's my first go around number one and I'm working virtually. <laughs> hey, I'm a retired kindergarten teacher. I know about herding cats. <laughs> <laughs> I like cats. <laughs> Barbara, can you do me a favor and put that in a small email just so I can capture it all? I don't want to make you repeat stuff. If you, it, whenever you get it. Absolutely. I would appreciate that. And Ryan, I just want to say, I mean, those are all outstanding. Um, you know, kudos to you. You're just uh, an all around. I mean, it, it says it right there. Great, great person. And we're really lucky to have you. We've had you since you were in middle school to our youth advisory board, and um, it's just it's been a, it's been a great uh, bunch of years. You have um, definitely stepped up on uh, and plenty of opportunities, and we appreciate it. Um, we're gonna miss you, um, mm -hmm. but we know that you're on to bigger and better things. Um, and I just want to say, you know, from the bottom of my heart and from the town, like we just we really thank you for everything and that you stuck with us. And you didn't give up on us, and we didn't get, we didn't annoy you enough. So, <laughs> um, but I think if you just have um, showed us that, I don't, I mean, Dylan's gonna have to step up in your footsteps now, right? <laughs> so he's great too, and it sounds like he is um, right there behind you. Yeah. So I just want to say thank you, and I'm sure everyone else here agrees. Thank you. That means a lot. And, and right. just on a personal note, um, Ryan was one of the leaders of DECA, and my son Jimmy was the only sophomore in DECA, and uh, he, he went to a conference, and Jimmy could have felt like a fish out of water because he really didn't have any peers, but Ryan was right there making him feel comfortable, and I'll always remember that. That's great. And Ryan, this is Barbara Rue, and I just wanted to say, um, I lived in Center City, Philadelphia for three years when my husband was in graduate school. It's a great city. There's a ton of things to explore and experience, and I hope you enjoy Temple. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank Bye. you, everybody. This is a high school, for sure. We expect you to come back and visit. Of course. I definitely will. <laughs> I hope I run into you before you go, but you're definitely going to be the high school, but most especially on the football field, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Ryan, it's Pam Harrison, though, to echo what everyone else has said. You know, you've really been such an asset to this group and to the Weathershield High School community. Um, it has been amazing to see you come out of your shell and be a strong leader over the last four years. And who you are in our building and amongst your peers is just remarkable. And I'm just so excited to see where you end up going next. 
thank you. It means a lot. Thank you from all of you. Um, ever since middle school, when I started attending these meetings, I feel like I've grown as a person. Um, this board has given me many opportunities to make strong relationships with town leaders such as yourselves. And it's something I can't really give back. So thank you. You're welcome. And I know we normally would have um, liked to do something um, with you, Ryan. So we have something up our sleeve. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> Sounds good. It's just Lynch, Ryan. That's all it is. <laughs> <laughs> so to be continued on that. But um, yeah, it's just, uh, it's been great. I mean, yeah, we've had you on our board for a long time. So um, that's, that's just, it's just a wonderful feeling to see that you're like, being able to uh, to go and you know to a great school and we'll we'll definitely miss you. Thank you. I'll miss you guys too. And you you have an awesome family who has been very supportive through this all. Your mom dropping you off at all those meetings, picking you up at all those meetings. So we want to thank them as well. And I will heavy. definitely let them know. Now we got to get your sister to come to these meetings. <laughs> We'll let you work on that though, Ryan. Yeah, I'll see what I can do. <laughs> um, anybody else have anything that they wanted to bring up? Um, any thoughts, um, concerns, um, ideas? Pam, no, <laughs> they know. I make oh, a motion uh, we adjourn. Can I, just, can I just have a quick update of what the actual graduation ceremony is going to look like this year for, for the group just to know with, um, for the graduating seniors? If anyone can give a little like snapshot of what that's going to be. Colleen, you're probably best. Yeah. I can give I'm a snapshot. Oh, oh, sorry. Go ahead. I'm, no, no, no. Go, go. Oh, okay. Uh, I can give a snapshot of June 12th. Um, I can't call it a graduation ceremony. We're calling it a, a graduate motorcade event. Um, we will be mailing out their diplomas on June 12th to make it official. Um, um, the graduates are invited to line up at Weathersfield High School in a, a parent or guardian driven motor vehicle. Um, the, the student can be in the car, but we're not recommending um, like former years where the students were driving because this is going to be a little bit longer um, motorcade route. Um, it's going to go from Walkin Hill exit of the high school. Um, it's going to Wells Road. Make a right what, take make a, a right on Wells. Take a right and then take a right on Wells, right? Up yep. to Ridge, all the way down right. Knot to Silestine. Yep, you're right. Across right, Silestine, right, right. up Wells. Yep. Was there a, was there a change? Because when I they was added, in there, They added Silestine onto it. Yeah, it the, Eric, after the meeting, they, they, um, they, they, uh, parents asked if, um, it could be extended and, um, Chief uh, allowed that extension. Oh, okay, good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, what's going to happen is they're all going to come back to the high school and line up again. And we're going to have a lot of people as parking attendants. Um, and they will come through the front area where they give out lunches and um, the board chair and Michael Emmett will be there. We'll have the, the class advisor announcing names and they will be given the, uh, the cover um, for their diploma and there'll be a photo opportunity. And then the car pulls out the next one. And that's pretty much it. It's gonna be live streamed, which is great. Um, I th think they're going to be able to tune in and hear it. So even if they're way back, 
on, you know, by the tennis courts when their friend is receiving their diploma cover, they could hear it. And we're planning a virtual uh, graduation. Um, the way we're um, communicating it is the virtual graduation will be presented to the community at the end of June if, if we cannot have a live ceremony in the summer. And right now, I think we've heard that you can have gatherings of up to 150. So that's breaking news as of yesterday. So that's right. all I can say is that we're going forward with the virtual until you know further conversations happen. And if we do have a live summer event, it will be student only. It, it won't be families to stay under the numbers. Okay. Did the governor executive order, I thought yesterday spoke about July 6th. Yeah, it would be a summer event if, okay. if, if, if it happens. We, there's just no decisions. Okay. Mm -hmm. Work in progress. Yep. And that's it. You're on mute. You're muted. I think Zoom was having some issues. Can you guys I also lost that? juice on my phone, so that's why I was off for a little bit. I have to go. Had to go charge it. Gotcha. Um, I ended up being, being kicked out. I just wanted to say congratulations to all the seniors this year. Um, I know this is not ideal by any means. So my heart goes out to them and their families. Mm -hmm. um, but I know that, you know, they'll be able to celebrate in their own type of way, but it won't be the normal. It'll be remembered. That's what I keep telling Abby. <laughs> this will go down in history in books. That's for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they'll always have a story to tell their kids and stuff. Exactly. The They're yeah. writing history as we speak. Mm-hmm. That's what they're doing. Well, yeah. I don't have anything further unless anybody else has anything that they want to share. Um, our next meeting is technically not until September. Mm -hmm. um, the first Thursday in September. Um, and obviously, we'll keep you guys updated. I might... We might try to have something um, as like a little retreat for the summer, somewhere outdoors, hopefully. Um, but I will keep everyone informed on that and probably send out like a little doodle poll to see who's around and what day works best. Um, and uh, that's really it. Does anybody have any questions? If not, anybody can make a motion um, and uh, we can go from there. I make a motion that we adjourn at 8.05. Does Barb Brown make a motion we adjourn? Uh, Barb, can someone second? Barbara. I'll Barbara. second. All in favor? Oh, sorry. Aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Bye. Bye. See you around. Bye. See you later. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Have a great summer. Come to the Thank library. You. Come to the library. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, guys. Bye. Good night, all. And you want to stop the recording? Yep, I'm doing that right now. Do you want to stop cloud recording?